Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science and Technology. In today's show, Rocket Monday, we're going to talk about Chinese space program. So let's dive deep into it. So Chinese space program, as of now, is re referred to as CNSA. Now this puppy started in 1993. Now like, wait a minute, isn't China achieved a lot of things before that? Yes, that is true. Exactly same way NASA was a basically a second generation agency. There was a first generation agency. So CNSA is Mark II variant. Mark I variant was Ministry of Aerospace Industry, MOAI. So they were responsible for China's space ambition. But at 1993, they decided it required its own dedicated branch. And they're like, okay, ta-da. So 1993, that happened. Now, all the space ambition now, like anything that you are seeing nowadays, as in like after 2004, uh, everything is going through only CNSA. Now, some big achievements were Dong Fang Hong, uh, basically this puppy, uh, it was launched in 24 April 1970. Now, it is quite significant given the fact that this makes uh, China the fifth country to launch their own satellite on their own rocket uh, from their own land, so to say. And be mindful, there are 200 countries on this planet. We have less than 20 countries that can even think about it or understand it and only 12, last time I checked, 12 or 15 maybe, uh, the countries that have actually this capability. You have North Korea, South Korea, Ira uh, Israel, Iran, like that's it, like surprisingly few, surprisingly few. Uh, so it was quite a big achievement. Now that achievement was like good. This achievement was daddy achievement. This was Yong Li, uh, the first Chinese astronaut. Now why this is a big deal? This was top five. This is third, third. Let that be very clear, third. There is no other country that is even attempting as of now. China will hopefully, if all things go well, it will become the fourth country and that is still at least uh, two or three years away from now. So this was quite significant. This achievement basically uh, take them from a point where they're like, oh, they are trying to reach up to NASA or trying to reach up to Soviet Union, past Soviet Union. No, this, they are trying to surpass. This basically established them as like, I'm here, I'm serious. So that happened, third country. And be mindful, uh, to do, give you the time gap of it, USSR achieved that in 12 April 1961. And uh, America is like, no, mine's bigger than yours. And they rushed their ass off in 05 May 1961. Yes, both of them are in the same year. Yes, few months apart. They rushed, like holy damn, they rushed. So they did that. And be mindful, what is the third? Third happened in 2003, 1961 to 2003. That's the gap. Nobody else even bothered to attempt it, not even ESA. So this was a very significant whoa. Like before this, everybody was like, ah, they are doing their stuff. After this, like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like you are actually trying to become the next NASA or like even bigger than that. So that happened. Now, as of now, when I'm talking this, when I'm making this video, uh, they are the only country as of now in 2024 with their own developed deployed space station. They're the only country. Like before this, uh, there was a space station known as Skylab. There was a, another space station known as Mir space station. Uh, one was Soviet Union, another was an um, American system. But both of them just were poofed. They are, basically, they, they did their job and they had their own uh, lifespan and then they were retired. But what happened after that? Uh, everybody lost interest. Everybody lost a budget for it. And consequence was to do something. Uh, three big players had to come together. USA, Russia. European Union, they had to share ISS and China just went, nah, bro, we good, we good. Now, of course, uh, ISS did not accept them, um, like international community did not accept them in uh, basically ISS and I think that worked out well for them. They're like, okay, we'll make our own. They did it. So ironically, they are the only country that can say that they have their own space station. It's Chinese space station. It's not international, it's Chinese space station. Now, what does that mean? That simply means USA really had to uh, work their ass off for next three years. They have two or three space station under construction. Uh, one of them should uh, launch very soon, Axiom Space. And after that, they can say, okay, America also has their own space station. Own space station. And of course, they have plans. And it's it could be almost like a scenario where they're like, once their private muscle starts to grow, then they're like, okay, bro, we got this, we got this. They will have like big puppies. So this is CNSA. So quite a big challenger, so to say. 
So what about the rockets? Uh, rocket, they have one family known as Long March Rocket Series, this puppy. And uh, I have no idea who named this and what is the reason or logic behind it. Most likely it makes sense. It's like it's uh, done from a chronological point, but not by size. So you will think, okay, uh, if you seven series is there, it should be bigger. Nah, the biggest one is five series. So five is the biggest one and uh, CZ11, Long March 11 is the smallest one as of now. Now they have like a lot of them and some are still under construction. Yes, there are numbers that are under construction, but later number is already launched. Yes, that's why I said like the numbering does not make that much sense, but it is what it is. It's a long March family rocket they have and how much oomph they have. Well, they have launched 64 launches in year 2022 and they did 67 launches in 2023. 2024 is not over, so I cannot uh, quote on that number. Uh, but again, this also provides context why SpaceX is a, such a big deal for America. It's like put whole planet on one side, SpaceX is like, bitch please. So again, they are the second closest competitor. Now Long March uh, 5, this puppy, the big one, is the biggest daddy they have. That is 25 ton to low earth orbit. That is like big enough they can carry their own, uh, you know, space station module in one go, like one big module, like big module. So that's a big one, low earth orbit. And in terms of geostationary, if they directly eat to geostationary, they can still send 5 ton. And if they do transfer orbit, if I'm not mistaken, that's around 9 ton. So they can deploy some heavy stuff. Like even India has struggling with this, like we actually had to transfer our uh, payloads to NASA, uh, not NASA as in SpaceX to deploy that in orbit. Uh, our GSLV Mark III is the heaviest one, it still does not come close to this one. So this is a heavy puppy, like this can actually, there are only few countries that can claim they have something bigger than this. Actually only one, practically speaking. So they, they have, in terms of government size, they are actually growing, but they realized very early on, specifically when SpaceX actually landed the first rocket, they realized they are not that good. And again, everybody has realized this, that government is no longer uh, in charge, so to say. So private players needed to be created in order to truly turbocharge the development. They did that. And as of now, when I'm making this video, uh, they have two players that have actually reached orbit, not just like, oh, we're gonna make it. Now we reached orbit. Like how we can say it's the same thing about SpaceX and uh, Rocket Labs. They have reached orbit, like done, they are sorted. So iSpace, they reached orbit in 2019 and uh, Galactic Energy in 2020. So they got it, it's done, it's sorted. So, and there are a few other companies that are also working under construction. I have not counted them simply because they have not reached orbit yet. And they are also working on reusable orbit uh, booster system. Again, one of the long mass series also has this pipeline where they're like, we're going to eventually make it into reusable. Right now, their core focus is making them as low cost as possible. And they have private players that are trying to replicate basically what SpaceX did quite amazingly. So in rocket wise, they are loaded. They are like, we got this. They got it. They got this. What about the missions? Well, uh, one of the biggest, uh, whoa, like mine's bigger than your mission is uh, Baidu navigation system. Now, if you know about anything about navigation, you know there are technically only two. Uh, one is uh, American system, everybody knows this, GPS, Global Positioning System. Second one, GLONASS, uh, that is a Russian system. But it was not maintained properly, like, like really, really not maintained properly. So GLONASS apparently has way too much issue either in the receiver end or on the satellite end, but that's the GLONASS. That's why I said like, it's not counted as effectively as you would think. And then you have a third system, which is from European Union. But uh, China just like Tokyo drifted in between. They made their own system that is binding navigation system. Now be mindful, this is a global system. Now if you're like, didn't India have something similar? Yes, India has something similar to what Japan has. Japan has their own navigation system and so does India. But these are regional navigation system, meaning they utilize geostationary and geosynchronous orbit to achieve positioning accuracy. It's not a global system. Now again, in case of Japan, they do not even need it. It's like for their own air traffic and for their own border defense, they are more than good enough. They have like meaning their own soldiers can have pull out their own receiver and be like, I got this. Military grade accuracy is encrypted. Uh, so unless you control the or basically constellation, uh, it's not that useful. And India learned this lesson the hard way during uh, India-Pakistan war of Kargil, uh, where uh, basically USA was trying to act as a mediator and they shut off all our GPS. So India was like a very bad bitch slap and uh, Again, I understand what they were trying to do, but it was like it's a big bitch slap because again, when you government tries to get uh, that military grade technology, they pay a bonkers amount of money. What's the point of that money if you're going to shut it off when we need to? So then we realized we have to build our own system. We built Navic. Now Navic is delayed simply because ISRO's rocket muscle is not that great. So they achieved this. 
in 2020 they are like bro we got this meaning any chinese uh, army person or chinese uh, shipping company can pull out their receiver and it's like i got this so that happened in 2020 and they have Ch uh, Chang'e's program that is for lunar system. They got this. It's like that program is just solely focused on lunar exploration and lunar mapping and all the stuff they need to do for lunar manned mission. They're done. They're sorted. They are slowly working on that project. And it already has like it got landing. It got a um, sample written. So done, sorted. Then you have a Tiongyon uh, space station program. Now this program is again responsible for their space station. It also works. Everything is fine and dandy. Then you have Tiongyon V1, this puppy. And this is Mars exploration. They actually did it. Not only they went through Mars, they landed on Mars. So that is also working. So all these things are big daddy uh, items. These are not a uh, aspiration of a small nation. This is a absolute aspiration. It's like, no, we are not just like, oh, we are behind NASA. No, no, no. We were late starter. That's how they are seeing themselves. We started late. We had a rougher beginning, so to say. And uh, now we are trying to catch up and we will surpass them. So in terms of their dream, in terms of their ambition, their catalog of missions shows that they are serious about this, like seriously serious. So what can we expect in the future? Well, this is uh, the core difference. If you compare India and China, you may find it's like, aren't both more or less the same? In some regards, yes. In one regard, no. Specifically, when I'm talking about ISRO. Now, while ISRO's foundation was laid down with good intention, it did have one flaw, which is uh, very common with uh, Indian entrepreneurship and basically India's. Basically, that's if you talk about Indian, these are the things that hurts us the most, uh, limiting us ourselves. Basically, unfortunately, I have only one TV show that used this dialogue quite well. Even our dreams are small. It's from movie expanse, not movie, the TV show expanse. The idea is when ISRO was created, they had a very clear idea. It's like we need to have our own space agency. And again, this is just after independence. We had massive issues. Let that be very clear. Massive issues. And again, we came from like 400 years of getting oofed from uh, East India Company and then Mughal Empire. Like we, we, we've been through stuff. So let that be very clear. So that new India that is like barely 76 years old at that time decided we're going to need a space program. Many people say like, what's the use? Like you, uh, you do not keep. Again, we had wisdom that we need this. We actually needed this. And again, for agriculture purposes, for communication purposes, for IT industry, we needed this. And we did that. Just a tiny glitch we did. That tiny thing. That is the most common flaw of Indian mindset, so to say. It's that our dreams were small. So like literally in the foundational passage made by the founding father of ISRO, we do not have dreams to compete with, uh, you know, big players, basically. Uh, at that point in time, NASA and uh, Soviet Union. So that was very sad, so to say. Now compare the same timeline, similar-ish, same timeline, same ethos, where it's like two poor countries and they're like, okay, we also need need space program. Okay, cool, awesome. But what is your aspiration? They did not hold back. They're like, no, we're going to be badass, man. Again, we are poor today, but we will not be poor tomorrow. That's what we messed up. That part really hurts me. But other than that, everything else is more or less the same. But that again, that's the core. They were never holding themselves back. So if somebody came to them, it's like, hey, let's build a big ass rocket. They're like, okay, let's build it. So that's how they got it. And their aim is very clear. They have to, they want to become like this. Basically, they want to surpass what NASA did. They are no longer like, like NASA. They're like, no, no, no. NASA is like us. NASA is trying to like us. That's their aim. Very clear about this. Now, manned lunar mission is in works for this exact reason. There is no physical purpose of it. Because again, um, Cold War is an actual war with the penalty of actual nuclear going boom boom. So there was an actual reason for it uh, to showcase, to actually like, you know, be like peacefully sorted out, so to say. And again, there was a reason for it. Two players jumped into it, walked their ass off in 1969. We had landing. So that was one era of it. But after 75, both of them were like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a waste of money. And by 1993, Soviet Union went poof. So why the heck China is doing manned moon mission, which is going to be idiotically expensive, but they are very committed to it. Their idea is very clear. It's like, if we want to go to Mars, we have to first sort the moon. We have to. Like, there is no uh, two way around it. You have to do all the mission. You have to build the whole pipeline. You have to sort so many things before you dare to go to Mars. And they are very clear about this. Like, first we go to moon, then we go to Mars. Very clear. It's like, it does not even matter to them, like, what America is doing. They're like, no, you achieved moon in the past. That's good. Awesome. GG. We're going to achieve even further because we do not have limitation. So that really motivates them. 
So bigger and better space station. They are not even limited. Oh, you have uh, ISS. Cool, cool, cool. Ours are bigger. That's their aim. That's their desire. That's their focus of it. So, and again, they realized the biggest limitation they had is that while CCP uh, can move things, get things done, it does ha not have the flexibility and intelligence of a private organization. So they are working their ass off to get that puppy done. And in terms of big money, they have loner rovers. So they got sorted. They're good. They're going. That's their future. And again, this is their space station, not ISS, their own space station. So in terms of ambition, they are not holding. They are not. They are ten times better than basically uh, European Union space agency. Where that's like, eh, eh. So they are working, like they are working their ass off. Now so far everything sounds good and great, but there is a dark side which genuinely has to be looked at if you want to understand. Like because many children. And yes, you could be 70 years old and be a child. It's like many times that people say, oh, dictatorships are awesome. Like, you know, communism is awesome. It's like, yeah, you are only seeing the good part and not the bad part. And if you cannot see the bad part, run. You haven't lived long enough or have studied history closely enough. So the darkness is that if you do not have to deal with bureaucracy, of course, you will be faster. Like, let's take example of something recent, SpaceX. SpaceX is like, okay, me going to Boca Chica, cool, awesome. We buy, build, get license for uh, basically rocket launches, cool, awesome. Uh, why the heck they are getting stopped by fishery department? Yes, it did happen. Yes, it did. Uh, again, it was resolved, but it took time away. Money cannot buy time. So what does China do? China is like, okay, we want to build a, a place, rocket launch site here. Okay, we built it. Done. Problem sorted. There is no, uh, you know, back and forth. <laughs> if you ever wondered how the heck China can build uh, such a high maglev speed, not maglev, I would say, high speed railway network so quickly, simply there is no competition. There is no back and forth. It's just like CCP said it, it was done. That was the priority. Like CCP said that's the priority. Everything else was moved aside. And again, it was done. It's like people are like, we are not moving here. Poof, they are moved. So again, see that now people will be like, oh, see, that's that means uh, our system is worse, democracy is worse. No, this is a we have learned this the hard way. And again, even America has learned this the hard way of 275 years of experience. You need this. It's bad. It's painful. It's slow. It's sluggish, but it is needed. And again, at the other end of it, that's what you have true prosperity and peace. If you go to the other side, it's like yeesh. first 10 years. Awesome. After that, it's like, what the hell have we done? So, of course. Fundamentally speaking, China should be as fast as it is. Again, even in India's case, when ISRO has to build something, it's not just like ISRO built it, done. No, there are like a freaking pipeline on top of pipeline and then parliament discussions. So it is there. So of course, China would be fast. So that's one factor. Second factor is funds are allotted without any question, so to say. Now, if you're like, okay, they landed, uh, basically they had a space mission in 2003. Did something big and bad happen after that? Yeah, 2008. So what happened to their space budget? Nothing. What happened to space budget of every single nation? Look into budget allocation of that year. There was massive cuts. And again, it had to be because no matter what you are dealing with, if you have a growing country, people want to expand. So at that point in time, everybody would be asking money. Like uh, your healthcare would be like more money. Your infrastructure would be more money. Everything would be, but you will always have small pool of money. So you have to distribute it. You have to balance it out. And again, that's why Cold War was so important. Cold War, they balanced it around in such a way that all others were suppressed for temporary reason. And then they're like, okay, let's push money to NASA. How much money they pushed? At that time, they were pushing upwards of 4.5% of national budget. How much they push now? 0.5. So of course NASA won't be flying at the same way that they used to. And again, even India also has to, uh, our budgeting is like a hell of a hassle where it's like people are fighting. Uh, this uh, government is like, no, we have to cut uh, Israel's budget. This government, no, we have to give Israel's budget. And again, it's painful, it's uh, laggy, but there is a reason for it. So in China, they do not have to worry. It's like China would have super bad flooding, a flooding so bad that uh, last flooding that uh, crippled Pakistan, Imagine that flooding multiply its consequences, multiply its surface area that happened to China and province like there is no uh, in basically re relief there because they cannot. It's just like, whoa, like it's a satellite image kind of bad. It's like, whoa, this whole area just whoa. And uh, they're like, gov people are begging government, please. Help. The government is like, that's why I said like, it's one of those things that you, at the other end, you will understand. Oh, that was the penalty of that. So. When funds are not getting competed competed on, it's like of course it will be much faster. So these two things gives you absolute advantage. It's like of course you will move faster. Of course you do not have to worry about it. And again, that's why their uh, moon missions have to slowly keep working away. Compare that to Indian mission, it's like 
दिस ईयर बजट वॉज कस बाय थर्टी फाइव परसेंट हो दिस ईयर वी गैट सम बजट दिस ईयर वॉज कस बाय सेवेंटी फाइव अगेन इट्स अ मेरिकल वी गेट समथिंग डन अगेन सेम फॉर ना सा सो दीज थिंग्स अगेन दीज थिंग्स आर पॉलिटिकल सिस्टम्स एंड ऑल दैट बट देर इज अ वन एक्चुअल डार्क साइड अगेन यू कैन टॉक एंड डिस्कश अबाउट ऑल द टॉप पार्ट दट आई टॉक्ट अबाउट सो फार बट दिस इज एब्सोलूट दे डो नॉट वरी अबाउट सेफ्टी this cannot happen in india this cannot happen in america this cannot happen in european union the only place this could happen is in china where they actually use uh, basically i talked about they they are working their ass off to make the rocket cheaper how can you make a rocket cheaper there is one option hypergalics hypergalic is now why the heck other countries do not use hypergalic well we realized the early way is like our health is non replaceable what is one uh, one thing lacking in Ch- china give a damn about public so they are like hey let's use hypergolic and his deal they can be a seaport they are trying to switch away but to keep the budget low and to make sure all the deadlines are met they are like let's launch it above public this happened a few days ago when i'm making this video this happened few days ago and again this is a common thing how common of a thing this is few years ago where it actually fell next to a school there is another incident where it actually fell on a building and four people were uh, reported uh, dead and be mindful local public and people who are like you know actually behind the scenes kind of they are like dude the building it fell on was huge so death toll is high and that's just the rocket part that orange smoke that's hypergolic cancer giving love so it gives that lot of cancer to lot of area which again pakistan uh, china never represents so of course your development process would be quicker of course you you will achieve far greater progress because while uh, spacex has to actually fight is like hey we are not destroying this uh, wildlife habitat and again even in india isro has to like hey this area is completely secluded we not going to have this and uh, china is like lol like this actually became so bad right now as i'm making this video is that there are rumors of introducing a parachute on the uh, basically boosters so at least it does not co- go boom instantaneously and i am actually short how much hypergolic remains on them but again it's a big ass rocket stage so again if you are like and again uh, recently they are like you know the accidental launch it was way too close to public compare that to boko chica you, now because there we have so much camera in boko chica you may think oh people are just living next to it no uh uh-uh. uh very far away and again all the things were designed such a way that it goes far away into the ocean so it does not cause a failure it was very and again that uh, actual footage is you can feel the shock wave in the footage like that's and again rocket is not a boom device it's a def, it's not like uh, you know actual detonation it's a deflagration it burns and if you're getting shock wave from a fuel oxygen uh, system that means you are way too close to it so fundamentally that's why it's so high it's like they do not give a damn about safety it's like oh our rockets are falling on the children who gives a shit like, our literally all children who cares we are using hypergolic that is literally giving us cancer who cares launch it at that point of course you you better be fast you better be fast at that point in time so there are some darkness like yes there are many things that are good and there are some things that i truly admire but the penalty the price that they are paying i am not willing to pay their price i will take my isro's slow and methodical except that freaking we do not have dream to compete is like na bro have faith in your future generation it's like again i am poor does not mean my 10 generation from now would be poor also they will be rich so this was my presentation on china's space agencies hopefully this would have given you a greater context and greater appreciation of how things are working and what role they play hopefully you have liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i do try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you free and as always thanks for watching